jioni ya leo ya sabato ningependa nikukaribishe katika ibada ambayo inaanza leo na itaenda paka kesho jioni na tunashukuru Mungu na tunazidi kumshukuru kwa nafasi yote ametupatia katika platform hii ya hewani kukutana pamoja na wewe katika jioni ya leo nitajaribu kusema na wewe kidogo ili tuone Mungu apa na mpango gani kwetu je Mungu ana mpango yoyote nasi wakati huu mgumu kabla tujaza na tupate kuoma kuomba baba na Mungu wetu atupendaye milele zote jioni hii ya leo bwana na kushukuru kwa wema wako na fadhili wema ambao umetupatia sisi wanawako jioni hii ya leo bwana nataka kusema na ndugu yangu dadangu mali popote yule amekaa kinikisikiliza Bwana katika ujumbe huu jioni wa leo uwafanyie baraka zako katika nyumba yao. Uwafanyie nehema Bwana katika mahitaji yao. Kama kuna sehemu ambayo sisi hatuwezi fika kama mwanadamu basi fanya miujiza sababu tumekuwa hapa tukiamini katika jina la Yesu nimeomba. Asante. Uh, neno la leo ni kwamba Mungu ana kusudi gani nasi? What is the purpose of God in our life? Je, Mungu ana kusudi lolote na wanadamu? Mungu ana kusudi lolote na mwanadamu na mwanadamu wakati huu? Ninaposoma katika Biblia yangu Nitaifanya kama Bible study, sitafanya kama nahubiri lakini nataka tuelewane kwa utaratibu. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 25 going through 27 something interesting is happening and God is defining a reason for our being. And this is what the Bible says. The Lord Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over all fish of the sea and of the birds of the air, over the livestock, over the earth, and over all the creatures that moves upon the ground. And so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created them male and female Kusudi tayari Mwenyezi Mungu amefafanua kwamba ana mpango wa kuunda mwanadamu katika sura yake na mfano wake Na sababu la mwanadamu kuumbwa tayari ametoa kwamba aumbwi kuishi katika hedeni kama maua mwanadamu hakuumbwa kuishi hedeni kama mawe mwanadamu hakuumbwa kuishi hedeni kama ngombe ama kunguru mwanadamu aliumbwa kwa kusudi maalum Mwenyezi Mungu akipanga pamoja na bingu katika kikao kikuu kwamba mwanadamu anaumbwa ili aishi katika samba la hedeni. Na kuumbwa kwa mwanadamu kuishi katika samba la hedeni ilikuwa ni mpango mzuri sana kwa Mwenyezi Mungu. Katika viumbe vyote viliumbwa hakuna yenye ilichukua sura na mfano wa Mwenyezi Mungu isipokuwa ni mwanadamu. So Mungu anakusudi na kiumbe hiki ambayo ameumba katika mfano wake na sura wake. Anasema ya kwamba atakapokuja katika shamba la hedeni atakuwa na kazi maalum ya kufanya. Atakuwa yakiyatekeleza mahitaji ama matako ya Mwenyezi Mungu katika shamba lake. So God had a purpose for making man. 
God had a purpose for creating us. God had a purpose for our being on earth. Because he says, let us make man in our own image and our likeness. Let me explain a little facts. Image is taken from the object. Likeness is a replica of the object. Same thing. Image and likeness tend to come to one understanding that they're taking from an from a, a object which existed before. For you to have an image, you must have an object. So man being the image of God, meaning man is a reflection of God. So you come out of Lewana. Man becomes a, re a reflection of God. And we are seeing man in the image of God and the likeness of God. Meaning the way he think, the way he operate, the way he talk, the way he desire things should be the way God wanted to be. So God had a purpose and a special purpose for man. Pengine ayeleweki vizuri wacha niruke katika kitabu cha Yeremia chapter 1 and actually from verse number 4 chapter 1 and verse number 4 then the word, then the word of the lord came to me saying before i formed you in your womb in the womb i knew you before you were born I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet for the nations. Kuna kusudi kuu Mwenyezi Mungu aliupanga mwanadamu kuingia hapa duniani. Na kusudi huu lazima tuitafute na tuijue kwamba kusudi letu hapa ni ipi. Mungu ana mpango gani nasi? What is the purpose of God in our life? What is the purpose of God for our being on earth? What is the purpose of God for our being Christian? What is the purpose of God for our being Adventist? Have you ever thought of asking yourself, what is my purpose of being Adventist? What purpose drives your life? What purpose are you operating on? What purpose are you built upon? Jeremiah Kambiwa kwamba kabla hajaumbwa hata tumboni mwa mamake Mungu alikuwa na kushudi na yeye kabla hajazaliwa chini ya jua hapa Mungu aliupanga kazi atakuja kuifanya je umewahi uliza kushudi lako hapa chini ya jua ni ipi je umewahi uliza swali kwamba wewe kuishi hapa duniani ni kusudi gani ama ni kazi gani ulikuja kuyafanya no one was created without a purpose and God did not heed the purpose of man somewhere he revealed purpose for everybody to understand his purpose on earth he explained to Adam that let us make man in our own image in our own likeness that he may work the garden that he may take care of the fish of the sea that he may take care of the plant of the garden that he may take care of the animals in the, in the wilderness that he may understand the, his reason of being in the garden now Jeremiah is being explained to that before I formed you I had a reason for you before you were born I designed a responsibility before you before you came on earth there was a purpose that you are coming to do and therefore the appointment of God to each one of us is hidden in God's purpose for each one of us and everybody came on earth for a reason and everybody is where he is for a purpose just a few days I was talking to a friend and he was telling me that something happened so accidentally he did not even understand how it happened but he later came to his senses when he was already inside the jail. He was already in prison for something he never understood how it happened. But his senses came back when he was preaching in the pulpit where there are people who are in jail. But immediately was through with the mission in the prison, then he came out. 
His senses came back after he was through with the prison. Then he was asking, why was I taken to jail? Only to realize that God destined it for him to preach a gospel for some soul to be saved. God took him inside there for a reason. Nothing happened under the sun without a reason. Nothing happened under the sun without a purpose. You are, where, you are where we are, where you are, for a reason. Until you understand your purpose on what you are, where you are, you will not understand the plan of God. We are not by accident here. We are not by any chance on earth. It is not an accident. It is not a magic that we live. It is not by our effort that we are here. It is for a reason that God has put us on this earth. God has placed each one of us on this planet earth for a reason and for a purpose. How I pray, my brother, that each one of us should define himself. Each one of us should understand his reason on earth. Each one of us should know why we still have life. We were born so many of us. We were became to other millions of us. And so many people have been taken away by the grave. So many people are asleep down in the, in the grave. But we are still living for a reason. And God wants us to define ourselves. That we may know each one of us. That we are not living for far. We are not on earth for any reason. We are on earth to fulfill God's purpose for each one of us. Now, in the book of uh, Matthew, chapter number, chapter number 10, actually chapter number 11, and verse number 30, uh, let me begin it from 20, 28. This is what the Bible says, I'm reading from NIV. The Bible says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your, in your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Human beings are suffering so much because we've carried what is not ours. The sin and the sin suffering is not our portion. The guilt and the consequences of sin is not our portion. For Christ wants us to have a transaction. And the transaction that the Lord wants us to have is that we give him our burden. We give him our guilt. We give him our worries. We give him our fear. That he may give us his peace. That he may take what is heavy on us. That we may have a light load that Christ is giving. What is it that Christ is giving? Christ came on earth to do a, a very heavy transaction. The transaction was to take the guilt of man that he may give man life and not only life but life in full. So that we be a vessel of honor. So that we be a vessel of work. Things that give God glory, things that give God's honor, things that give God praise. That when God look into us, he see worthy people, people of substance, people that give God glory. And heaven applauds when we sing. Whenever we walk, we become a message to the world. Where we sleep, we become a testimony to people. Where we walk, we walk. As though Christian, as though Christ himself, whenever we talk, it is like the angel speaking. But what has happened to us? We have identified ourselves so much that the word Christianity becomes a myth. Because people do not understand what Christianity is. There are a lot of definitions that people have been given about Christianity. I don't know what you have. But this is what I have from my Bible. That Christianity is a lifestyle. For you to be called a Christian, you must have Christ-like life. That you live like Christ. That you walk like Christ. That you talk like Christ. Remember Peter one night when Christ was supposed to be killed. A young lady found him and noticed him. That him looked like one of his disciples. Because many a times he was with Christ. And people have seen him. 
celebrating the miraculous happening that Christ was performing. And the young lady pointed at him and said, this one looks like one of them. And then Peter denied. Then somebody across said, but even the way you talk, your voice is like Christ. So Peter became first Christ-like man. Because he walked like Christ, he talked like Christ. And that is the lifestyle that you, heaven wants us to have. Heaven wants us to adopt that lifestyle. And that's why Christ gave everything in heaven. That we may not perish. Remember what he says in John chapter, chapter 3 verse number 16. That for God so loved the world so much. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever will believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. But here comes a question. What have we believed on? Do we believe in Christ fully? Do we trust in his teaching? Do we trust in his words? Are we full Christian? Or we are still doubting? Maybe something else will, will change. Something is happening in the book of Colossians. Chapter number 1. And uh, verse. Chapter number 1. And verse number 16. I like what my Bible says. Uh, it says this that for him all things were created things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether throne or power or rulers or authority all things were created by him and for him so Christ being everything for us Christ being everything we want on earth Christ being everything we would desire to have on earth. Christ be whatever man would think in his mind should be his. is revealed in Christ. And that's why he says, take from me, for my Lord is easy. And my burden is light. And that is the purpose of Christ. That we take from him that we copy him, that we walk like him, that we imitate his lifestyle. Remember, he gave everything in heaven that he would buy men by his own blood to his father. It was a difficult thing for Moses in the wilderness uh, for, for him to understand the purpose God had for him when he was being sent back to Egypt. It was so heavy. He's been in Egypt for 40 years. He struggled to fight uh, deliverance for his people. He struggled to find freedom for himself. He struggled so much to even win peace for his family. And it was not possible. Remember, Moses was royalty. But in that royalty, he realized it was not very much important of his life. So he wanted some freedom for his people. Because he learned that his root was Hebrew. He killed and he ran away. He stayed in the wilderness for another 40 years. And God is now pushing a man of 80 years of age back to Egypt. It was not so easy. Moses meandered with God in so many issues. He told God, you remember, I am not eloquent. I don't know how to speak so well. I cannot do this purpose. I cannot fulfill your desire, O Lord. Permit somebody else to do it. Who, what will I tell people you are? I don't really understand who you are. I remember what God is saying in chapter 4 of Exodus, verse number 10. This is what my Bible says. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my, oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither there, neither hereafter, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto Mo, the Lord said unto him, Who has made man's mouth, or who made the dumb, or who or deaf, or the sea, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? So when God has a purpose for each one of us, He can make what He wants to use as a vessel. So our responsibility on earth currently is to submit to God's will, to understand. God's cause for each one of us to accept the God's design in our life. A friend of mine once told me uh, that he was uh, on a journey on a mount climbing 
and then the parts happened to be so many. So he got lost from the campsite. And then he had a runner, I was searching where he was. Then he was searching the direction where he could go. And then the runner told him, from where you are, you will not be able to get back to the campsite. So what you do, move to the other side of the mountain that you may find the direction. In many attempts in life, we always tend to believe that we can find the direction from where we are. We always think that the way we reason is the best way to find the direction of our life. People always think that what they have in terms of wealth, in terms of knowledge, or the friends around them can make them understand the purpose of God. That is what it is. It must start from somewhere. And where to start is in Christ, where everything was created by him and for him. For Christ is the only reason that we may find our purpose in life. Christ is the only reason that we may understand our destiny for life. Christ is the only reason that we may understand the reason of being on earth. Christ is the only reason that will define each one of us. And living on earth without a purpose is a journey to a dead end. One scholar once said that a man living without a purpose of God in his life is like a ship without a rudder. It will end to no destination. It will end to no destination. We must have a purpose in life. We must understand God's plan for each one of us. What we may have may go in a way or may end in a minute, but the purpose of God in each one's life will stay forever. For that is the power that will give him opportunity to see heaven. I will pray with you this evening. I will pray with you this evening that we may not be shaken by the situation that is going on. We may not be shaken by the teaching that we find everywhere. We may not be shaken by what we hear people talk. We may not be shaken by what we hear people say. We may not be shaken by what people think is the way to go. Our definition is found in the Lord. And each one of us have a purpose in God. And God has a reason for each one of us to live. May you know your purpose here. May you understand the reason why you are on earth. We will pray together. And I will pray to God to myself and to my family and to my friends and the people around me that each one of us should understand and define the purpose why they live. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, this evening you brought us to a wonderful message that we may understand you and understand the purpose that you have us. That we may know the purpose that will drive our life. Because life without a purpose in you, my father, is like moving in a confused world. And what we may sometimes think to be the reason of worshipping you are not seriously valid reasons. Because some of us have worshipped you because of friends. Some of us have worshipped you because they are members of this society. Some are because of their colleagues. Some became members of this church because of women. Some were brought here because of their husband. And some were looking for some different kind of things. Some because of job they found in this church. But you want us to have a reason, each one of us, to worship you. And each one of us should have the understanding of your calling for each one of us in this church. Because you want to take the church home very soon. And you will not take the church home if your members that you call to this ministry are not doing your way. Before you expose us to real judgment, my Father, may your Holy Spirit define in each one of us. May your Holy Spirit define it in each person. May your Holy Spirit define it in my heart. May your Holy Spirit define it into the leadership of this church. May your Holy Spirit define it to our pastors. May your Holy Spirit define it to the structure that govern this church. That we may move with the purpose that drives church to your calling. May we put aside all our desires and want. May we put aside all our knowledge and pride. That we may see each person to be important in this ministry. Because you call each one of us for a reason. 
We just need to create Adam in Eden to be there. But you made him in Eden for a reason. When you brought Jeremiah, you defined him and you told him this reason and the purpose why he was here. May each one of us, my father, understand this reason. May each one of us, my God, know his purpose on earth that we may walk in it and stay there steadfastly. May your name be glorified forever because you are God in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the, Lord, may the good Lord bless you and keep you until you meet again tomorrow. God willing, in a holy Sabbath. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.